This is Steve Sandoval, and welcome to the Holy Week special of Pathways of Hope. This is uh, Faces and Mask. Today, we try to unmask Judas Iscariot. I will try to answer, who is Judas Iscariot? Why did he do what he did? And uh, what is the lessons that we can learn as followers of Jesus Christ? Judas Iscariot is best known as the man who betrayed Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. But who is the person of Judas? Judas is the only Judean among the 12 disciples of Jesus. It implies that Judas is from more prominent parts of the country, while the rest are what we would say in today's term provincial. The name Judas in Greek version of uh, the Hebrew, Judah, which means praise or let God be praised. His second name is Iscariot. As some researchers roughly would say, it means Sikari or Daggerman, which is a group of ultra zealots. So why did Judas betray Jesus for 30 pieces of silver? One possible reason which I can glean from Judas being a zealot is he may have believed that if they turned the whole Jeru Israel back to God and incited war against the Romans, he believed that, Ju that uh, Jesus could lead them to driving away the Romans and establish God's kingdom. But when Jesus started talking and speaking of sacrificing and dying for his people, Judas began to think he might have made a mistake in following Jesus. Jesus preached that he is going to change the world by the power of love and not through armies and weapons that inflict harm against other humans. It can be surmised that the, the turning point of Judas was happened in Bethany when Mary, a disciple of Jesus, poured a, a jar of perfumed oil upon his feet. And Jud Judas reacted and complained aloud with his displeasure to Jesus. Why was not this ointment sold for the 300 pence and given to the poor? But Jesus gently rebuked Judas and said to him that he will not be with them for long, but the poor will always be there. So Judas, in the next scene we hear, is selling information to the chief priests of the temple for 30 pieces of gold, silver. Now, the main thing that we could learn from the situation of Judas is, number one, we must seek daily in prayer to ask ourselves, what is the purpose for us in doing what we do. It is important that our true purpose would be the love of God with all our heart, soul, and mind. For Judas, his true purpose would have been a political purpose as a zealot that he would follow Jesus into battle and drive away the Romans. So we must examine our conscience daily and ask, what is our motivation? Second lesson is that we need to allow God and the Holy Spirit into our hearts. Clearly, the most compelling evidence, the finest teachings, the healing, all of this cannot change the heart of Judas. 
But for us, we must offer our free will to God. We must give ourselves fully and allow the Holy Spirit to change our hearts from hearts that seek to do only our will to hearts that wish to do God's will. And third lesson, we learn that unconfessed sin could open us or our souls to Satan. For people who walk in the light of Jesus, Satan cannot gain a foothold. But those who walk in darkness, they are open game. Judas had been stealing from the collective money bag. And even before that, betraying the trust of the disciples. And he thought no one knew about it. He could have confessed this. But he did. Satan was relentless in his assault against Judas. And even up to the last moment, when he sat together with the Lord in banquet after he made a deal with the chief priests, he had a chance. Because our Lord indicated that he knew what Judas was doing. There was an opportunity for him to confess, and he didn't. And again, unlike Peter, Judas just wallowed in his guilt, and we all know what had happened. He ended up taking his own life. While Peter, who denied the Lord three times, confessed and became our leader of the church. Brothers and sisters, I hope I have uncovered the mask of Judas Iscariot. And I ask you to reflect on three questions. First, do we in our daily prayer time examine our motivation in alignment with our true purpose, which is to love God and to do all things in His honor? Second, do we have unconfessed sins in our life? And do we seek the sacrament of reconciliation even for seemingly small sins? Because we need to be vigilant against the attack of Satan. Holy Week is a period of tremendous grace. Step forward before God and claim it and witness your transformation. God bless you all.